So let's talk about problem number one here, part A. We want to convert 5.000 days into seconds. So we start with what we know. We write down 5.000. I'm going to write down D for days. And how do we go into seconds? Well, I don't know how many seconds are in a day. Otherwise, I could do it in one step. But I do know that one day has 24 hours in it. If I can write hours correctly, like this. Now, why do I write it like this? Because the days in the top and the bottom cancel. If I stop the calculation now, I have hours, right? Now, how do I get over towards second? I know that in one single of these hours, I know that there are 60 minutes. And I arrange it this way so that the hours cancel. Now, if I stop the calculation, I will end up in minutes. So I don't want to stop because I also know that in one of these minutes lies 60 seconds. And that's where I want to end up because I'm trying to convert to seconds. And so the only units left are seconds. So I don't have to think about, do I multiply? Do I divide? Like you kind of want to go through this mental gymnastics. But with this, you know exactly what to do. You take the five, you multiply by the 24, divide by one, of course, multiply by 60, multiply by 60 again, dividing by all these ones doesn't do anything. And what you're going to get is 4.320 times 10 to the five seconds. So you move the decimal one, two, three, and then two more spots for five, that's how many seconds there are. There's no question marks about what to do. The units cancel this way, so it has to be the correct answer because this is the only unit left over. All right, 4.320 times 10 to the five seconds. Okay, let's talk about part B. We're gonna convert 0 0.05500 miles into meters. Now again, I don't know exactly how to go miles to meters, so I'm just going to start with what I have. 0 0.05500 miles. How do I go from miles and get closer to meters? All right. Well, you can either look it up in a book or, you know, somewhere on the uh, on a reference sheet, and you will find out that one mile is equal to 1.6093 kilometers. This is something I don't remember. This is something I look up in a book. Now you have to write it this way because miles will cancel with miles on the top and on the bottom. And once I have it into kilometers, it's very easy to go from to meters. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. And the kilometers have to then cancel. So now you have meters left over. So if you take 0 0.05500 times this, and then times 1,000, you're going to get 88.51. And the only unit left is meter. So you know that that's the right answer. Now this one, I want you to pay attention to. I want you to convert $1.890 per gallon into dollars per liter. So this is like a price per volume, per liter, per gallon, or whatever of either gasoline or water or whatever it is. But it's a compound unit because you have dollars on the top and gallons on the bottom, dollars on the top and liters on the bottom. So the dollars doesn't need to be converted, the, but the vol, unit of volume does. But you write down what you are given to start with, and you write it like this, 1.890. Instead of putting a dollar sign, right in dollars, D-O-L means dollars, per... That's the slash here, gallon. Gallon goes in the bottom. So when you have a, 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 a compound unit like that, one unit goes on top, one unit goes on the bottom. Now, I don't want to touch the dollars. That stays the same in my answer, but I need to turn this into liters. So I find the conversion factor, and I find out that one gallon is equal to 3.7854 liters. You look that up in a book somewhere or go on the internet, and you arrange it this way because gallons cancels with gallons. Now. If I continue the calculation, I'm going to end up with dollars on the top and liters on the bottom, which is exactly what I want. So 1.890 divided by this gives you 0 0.4993 dollars per liter. And so the units you have left are the units that are left behind here. So it's absolutely bulletproof. You don't need to decide logically if you divide by this or multiply. You arrange it so the units give you what you want back from it. Okay. Let's go over here and solve the next problem. Let's calculate 0 0.5100 inches per millisecond. So that's a really weird unit of velocity. And we're going to go into kilometers per hour. 
we write down 0 0.5100 inches go on the top and I'm gonna extend, I'm gonna need a lot of space here. So I'm gonna go across here and milliseconds on the bottom, inches per millisecond. Now focus on one unit at a time first. First, we're gonna work on just the inches and then later we're gonna work on the uh, milliseconds. So the inches need to be converted to kilometers, right? Now I know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So I'm gonna write it like that so that the inches on the top will cancel with the inches on the bottom. And I'm left with centimeters as the unit of distance. I don't want that either. I want uh, kilometers, right? So I know that uh, one centimeter is 10 to the minus two meter. Or you could write it as one meter is 100 centimeters. I mean, that's fine too. I'm gonna write it like that so that the centimeters on the top and the bottom cancel. So if I stop the calculation now, it'll be meters per millisecond, all right? but I don't want meters on the top, I actually want kilometers. So I have to write that one kilometer is the same as 1000 meters. And now I have the meters canceling. Now, if I stop the conversion now, it'll be kilometers per millisecond. So I have the distance in the correct unit. Now I got to convert milliseconds into hours. I could stop here, but I'm just going to continue going in the same exact unit conversion. So I have milliseconds here. I know that there are, uh, in one millisecond, there are 10 to the minus three seconds. That means uh, the same thing as saying 1,000 milliseconds in one second, or one tiny little millisecond is a very small fraction of a second, one one thousandth of a second. And I arrange it like that because now the milliseconds cancel from here to here. Now I'm in the unit of seconds. How do I go to hours, right? I know that uh, 60 seconds in one uh, minute and when I do that, the seconds cancel. Now I have units of minutes, but I want minutes, units of hours. I know that 60 minutes is one hour. And so the minutes cancel. Now look at that monster. But all of the units are gone. The only one left is kilometers on the top and hours on the bottom. Everything else is, is gone. And I don't have to think, oh, should I multiply? Should I divide? What makes sense? No, I just arrange the units in a way that everything cancels except for what I want kilometers per hour. So let me double check myself. If I take this, multiply by 2.54, multiply by this, divide by a thousand, and then divide by essentially a thousand again, because that's what, uh, or no, I divide by 10 to the minus three, which is essentially like multiplying by a thousand, but divide by 10 to the minus three, and then multiply by 60, multiply by 60 again, what I'm going to get is 46.63 in the only unit left kilometers per hour. And that is the final answer. All right, that one was kind of a mouthful. Next problem, part E. Let's convert 22.500 gallons per minute into liters per second. Now, what kind of unit is this, gallons per minute? This is like a pump. You know, I have a giant pump. How, how fast does it pump? So many gallons per minute. But I don't like that unit. I wanna convert it into liters pumped every single second. So how do I do that? I just write down what I've been given, 22.500 gallons go on the top and on the bottom, minutes go on the bottom. So it's gallons per minute. Now we work on the gallons first. You don't have to, but I'm just gonna choose to work on the gallons first. I know that one gallon, I looked that up, one gallon is 3.7854 liters. And I arrange it that way so that the gallons on the top cancels the gallons on the bottom. So I have liters per minute if I stop right now, but I don't want to stop right now. I want to convert minutes into seconds, right? But I know that in one minute, there are exactly 60 seconds. And I just stop because that's the correct unit. Minutes cancels with minutes. So at the end of the day, if I take 22.500, multiply by this, and then just divide by the 60, I get 1.5. 4195, and the units that are left over are liters per second. So it's liters per second. And this is exactly the same as the uh, flow rate, it's called flow rate, that we had uh, just above here. All right, this will be the last part of this problem, part F here. 0 0.025000, and we're going to convert cubic feet into cubic centimeters. Now in the last, I think it was two lessons ago, I showed you how to handle this. This is a unit of volume. 
Now you gotta be careful. Let me show you the best way to do it in my opinion. 0 0.025000. Instead of writing it as foot feet cube, write it as feet times feet times feet, because that's what a volume is. It's one dimension times the other dimension times length times width times height. So the feet cubed is really feet, feet, feet. There's three feet there multiplied together. And then it becomes very easy because you know that there in every one foot there are 12 inches. And you know that if you just stop right there, you're gonna cancel only one of these feet, but you have two more left. So you have to do it again. And this forces you to do it again. One feet, 12 inches. And you're gonna to have to do it again. One feet, 12 inches. And when you blow it out like this, you're forcing yourself to cancel this unit with this one, and then this one with this one, and now you're left with inches times inches times inches. If you stop the calculation now, you're gonna get cubic inches. But we don't want that. We want cubic centimeters. So then we remember that in one inch, there are 2.54 centimeters, right? And inches here cancels only one of the inches. I still have two more, so I have to keep writing. It forces you to do the right thing. One inch, 2.54 centimeters. And you're gonna have to do the same thing again. One inch, 2.54 centimeters. Now this inch will cancel with this one and this one right here will cancel with this one. Now what units do I have left? I Everything is gone except centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, which is, drum roll, cubic centimeters. So take this number times 12, times 12, times 12 again, times 2.54, times 2.54, times 2.54 again, and the answer you're gonna get is 707.92. What is the unit? Centimeters cubed, because they're all multiplied together down there. This is what I mean when I say dimensional analysis. It's like a very powerful way, so you really never make any mistakes converting units. Because what a lot of students will do is they'll write this as cubic feet, and then they'll just convert feet to inches or something, and then, but they forget that there's like two more, there's a total of three feet multiplied together. So you can't just do the conversion once and get cubic inches or whatever, cubic centimeters. You have to blow it out like this, otherwise you're gonna get the completely wrong answer. All right. The next part of this thing, the last problem in this, uh, in this section here. An airplane is in need of a repair and requires 20.70 square centimeter patch. How large is this patch in square kilometers and how much will it cost to conduct the repair if the material costs $3.25 per square inch? So converting area, which is what we're doing in this problem, square inches, square feet, square kilometers, is the same idea as uh, converting volume. Same sort of thing. So let's start over with what we know. The area of the problem in the airplane is 20.70, and it's centimeters squared, which is the same thing as centimeters times centimeters. So instead of writing it as centimeters squared, we're gonna blow it out with centimeters times centimeters. And then we wanna convert this to square kilometers, right? But we know that one centimeter is the same thing as 10 to the minus two meters. Now, if you stop right there, You've only canceled one of these centimeters. You still have another one. So you have to do the same thing again. One centimeter is the same as 10 to the minus two meters. And now you've canceled both of these. But you can't stop because this would be square meters if you multiply it out. We want square kilometers. So then we write down that 1,000 meters is the same thing as one kilometer. And we're going to have to do the same thing again. 1,000 meters is one kilometer. Why do we have to do it twice? Because this meters cancels with this one, and this one cancels with this one, and now I have kilometers times kilometers, which is square kilometers. So if I take this number, multiply by 10 to the minus two, multiply by 10 to the minus two again, divide by 1,000, and then divide by 1,000 again, I get 2.070 times 10 to the minus nine, what? Kilometers times kilometers, which is kilometers squared. So we converted area into square kilometers. Notice it's a really small number because this unit is so big. And of course, it's not that big on an airplane. So that's what we did there. Now, in the next part, it says, uh, how much will it cost to repair this thing if the material costs $3.25 per square inch? So what we have to do first is convert this to square inches. And then we're gonna apply the dollars per square inch to find the cost, all right? So we're gonna do the same sort of thing again, 20.70 
centimeters, centimeters again, because it's square centimeters, right? We want to convert this to square uh, inches. But we know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. And we know we're going to have to do it again. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. I guess I don't need all that. And why do we need both of those? Because only one of them cancels here, and then the next one cancels here. So if I take 20.70, divide by 2.54, divide by 2.54, I get 3.209 inches times inches is inches squared. So this is the area in inches. But then it says, okay, if I know I have 3.209 uh, inches squared, and in, in the problem statement, it says, uh, it costs $3.25 per square inch. So the way you write this is $3.25, uh, which is the same as $3.25 uh, per one square inch. This is the conversion factor from, uh, uh, from dollars converting into square inches, essentially. How much dollars does it cost per square inch? And you arrange it this way, because we now have the square inches canceling. So it's really inches times inches, and inches times inches, everything is gone. And so what you do is you multiply these numbers together. 3.209 times 3.25 is, the answer is 10.43. The only unit left is dollars. And so it's $10.43, that's what that means. So when you know what the area is, and you know the cost in dollars per area, when you when you, because for every square inch, this is how much it costs. So we multiply by the total number of square inches we have. Now you can logically think through that you have to multiply them, um, but if you aren't sure, you just arrange the units. So you get dollars out of it, and then you get the answer you're seeking. So I hope you can now start to see the power of unit conversions. It's not just something we learn and forget. It's actually something we're going to use throughout the entire class, and also classes you take beyond this one. Solve these, make sure you understand. We have one more lesson on dimensional analysis. Let's conquer it right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.